Good morning. And welcome to those who have gathered here this morning as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. We are delighted to have with us this morning some of Pastor Blowbaum's family. Uh, they are sitting here, so if you would like to speak to them after the service, please be sure and do that. We continue with our joys and our concerns. Are there any joys or concerns that you would like to share this morning? Okay, so Amal was part of the last graduating class of Maywood, and uh, Ann says that he's old, almost as old as Donnie, which I can hear Donnie now going, yeah, that would make him about as old as Ann. So we, <laughs> since we're discussing age this morning, you know, <laughs> any other now, any other joys or concerns? A word about the service. Last Sunday, we had a sermon, a uh, hymn of the day that got switched out. For some reason, they are getting tighter and tighter on what we can and cannot play, what is copyrighted and available for use and what is not. Last Sunday, we had to switch out a hymn. I think this Sunday, we had to switch out two. Um, so if you notice from time to time, we only switched out one. I was thinking we switched out a sermon, uh, the communion hymn, and then we had to switch out the sermon hymn. The okay. Anyhow, oh, they're correct in the bulletin. Other than the, the, hymn, of the, Other than the hymn of the day. Okay. Um, so, yeah, please make note of that. You should have an insert that is the hymn of the day because we had to change it out at the last minute. I, I tell you, I, I say sometimes, you know, people don't realize how hard it is to get some of this stuff together. Um, you know, we have to check and break through the copyrights and we can play these songs and stuff and it's getting more and more and it's like, uh, I think uh, Debbie someday should be saying it. <laughs> anyway, we continue with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand as able. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what you have done and by what you have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your way and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. with you. Let us pray. God of all power, you call from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of his word. Good morning. Good to see you all. Have these pews filled every Sunday would be great. Good morning and welcome. The first lesson for today, Peter and John had been arrested the previous day because they were proclaiming the news of the resurrection to the people. In today's reading, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit so that he can proclaim salvation in Jesus' name to the religious authority. Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem, and Aeneas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were the high priest family. When they made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, 
If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been feel, healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Here ends the reading. The psalm for today is quite familiar, I hope, to each one of you. It's the 23rd psalm. I'll read the light bold, and if you will respond with the bold, please. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He takes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along bright pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second lesson for today is 1 John chapter 3 verses 16 through 24 we know love by this that jesus christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another how does god's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees his brother or sister in need yet refuses help little children let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if your hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us. All obey his commandments, abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, that I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, for I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come up for a moment. you this morning. How are y'all this morning? Let's try that one again. How are you this morning? Thank you. Glad to hear it. This morning we had the 23rd Psalm and it talks about all the things the shepherd does for us, right? I once heard a pastor say that there are two sheepdogs in that song. Do any of you believe me? Any of you have a puppy? Does the puppy follow you? Okay. Well, if you read the 23rd Psalm, it says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. And he says that those are God's sheepdogs. That God's sheepdogs are named goodness and mercy. Now, what does a sheepdog do? Does anybody know? A sheepdog helps keep all the sheep in line. You know, it helps them keep going where they're supposed to go, and if they get out of place, he goes and gets them and gets them back in. And he does this by kind of biting at them. He doesn't ever bite them, but he bites at them, kind of scares them. Do you have anybody in your life that kind of keeps you in line? Who? Mom. Who else? Sister. Sister. Okay. Dad. Okay, this morning we are going to pretend that all those people that keep you in line, that God has, well, we're not going to pretend. We're going to pretend they're sheepdogs. Do they keep you in line? Do they, do, do they kind of get rough with you sometimes? have to raise their voices to you sometimes? Yeah. And they help keep you in line. God gives us those people, our moms and our dads, our teachers, those people that help us to stay where we need to stay so we can learn what we need to learn. And what God wants us to learn is that we are all special to Him. Did you know that? We know we're all special to God. Yeah. He loves each and every one of us. And he wants us to grow in his love and love one another. And he wants us to be kind to one another. And he gives us people who help us along the way. So this morning I want to give thanks for those people. So we're going to give thanks for our moms and our dads and our older siblings our older brothers and sisters who keep us in line. Maybe our teachers. Who else maybe keeps us in line? Grandma and Grandpa. Aunt and Uncle. Yeah, there's all kinds of people that help keep us in line, aren't they? Yeah. So we're going to thank God for them because they do a very important job, okay? And they love us just as God does. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for those who are the sheepdogs in our lives, who keep us in line, who keep us where we need to be, so we can grow in love and be kept safe. Thank you for their love. Moms and dads, brothers and sisters, Teachers, teachers, aunts and uncles, aunts and uncles grandmas, and grandmas and grandpas, and all those people who help us grow. Who help us grow. We thank you for their love as we thank you for your love. Amen. And you can get your treat and you can go back to your seat.
<laughs> this morning's gospel lesson is John, the 10th chapter. Jesus talks about being the shepherd of the sheep. And so many pastors this morning will gather in their pulpits and they will gather around their congregations and they will talk about that shepherd. But for a moment, I want to shift their focus. This morning, I want to tell you, I'm glad you're all part of the herd. I'm glad you're all a part of the flock. Because truly, that's what we are. If the Lord is our shepherd, then we are his sheep. And as I began thinking about that, I began thinking about what does it mean to be part of the flock? That's not always an easy thing to talk about. We live in a country where the individual has been praised. You know, I did it my way. We praise that person who has succeeded on their own. We praise that person who has that ingenuity. We want our children to grow up to be their own little individuals. We want them to grow and be able to express who they are. But have you ever thought when we start growing up and we start expressing who we are, what's the first thing our parents do? I don't know if any of y'all were like my dad. They said his favorite thing was, you're not going out of the house dressed like that. You know, you are a part of this family, and you are not going out like that. But you keep telling me to be my own person. I don't care. You're not being your own person this morning. Even being part of a group comes with rules, doesn't it? There are ways that we need to behave in order to be part of the herd, to be part of the group. Part of it is that we need to think about sometimes what is best for the group, not what is best for the individual. Then that comes a little against what we've been taught. You know, we want to be individuals, but there are certain rules in any group. When I was growing up, I know the kids love to hear me say this. When I was growing up, we went to church. You didn't talk in church. We loved to sit on the front row, but we got tickled at the pastor's sermon one Sunday, and then we got moved back beside Mama. I even have people who tell me, and I know this for a fact, there was this little lady, and I do mean little lady. She probably was five foot, little tiny thing. She raised four boys. Her husband died early, and so she raised four boys on her own. And they said they knew better than talk in church because they would be sitting there talking among themselves, and all of a sudden they'd feel whap. Said for a little woman, she had a long reach. And, of course, my favorite is I used to tell my children, if you can't behave in church, we're going outside to have a prayer session. Uh, they learn real quick that nobody wants a prayer session with me. And they learn to be better. There are ways that we behave as part of the group. What is best for the group? What is best for the congregation? We've faced some of those times in the last year. And as I was thinking about how God provides for us, I thought about some of the conversations we had about reopening churches. And when my... My colleagues were saying it's in the best interest of the congregations to keep them closed. I'm going, y'all don't know this congregation. And so they said, we can't give them communion, da, da, da. You know, if any of y'all remember some of that dialogue back. And I said, we've got to have a way for our people to come receive the body and blood of Christ. So we worked out that way. And I saw people come. When we got word that we could reopen our churches at 25%, we reopened our churches. And I have never regretted that moment. Because in that moment, that day that we reopened our church, there was such joy. 
Y'all were rowdy. I don't know how if y'all know how rowdy y'all were that Sunday morning, but y'all were rowdy. It was like y'all had all come to a family reunion where you hadn't seen each other for the past 10 weeks. Hmm. Well, that's what happened, wasn't it? We all got to come back together and see the people we hadn't been able to see for the last 10 weeks. And it was joyous because the group, the herd, the congregation, the flock, whatever you want to call us, needed to be together. And apparently we still need to be together. Look around you. We come on Sunday morning because we need to hear about God. But we come on Sunday morning because we need to see other people as well. I can remember when going to church was the social event of the week. You know, we worked on these farms and we worked all week long. And getting to church on Sunday was when everybody checked in with everybody else. And even around here I noticed that. This morning people asked me about how somebody was doing. They haven't been able to see them. How are they doing? We care about one another. That's what this flock does. These are the great things about being part of a group. And sometimes the decisions we make when we start talking about it is what is best for the group. Not what is best for me. Not what is best for you, but what is best for the group as a whole? What is the best way to help people know God's love and care? What is the best way to help our children grow in their faith? What is the best way to get that millennial and Generation X back in church or back where they are hearing the Word of God? What is the best way to care for our aging congregations? all these questions that we need to think about. What is best for the congregation? What is best for the people of God? Not just what's best for me. And God is so good and so gracious, so kind. He provides for us all that we need. Many of us learned that 23rd Psalm as children. We learned it even before we got to catechism class or during catechism class. We know that it talks about God's provision. Sometimes God wants us to be together and think about how he is taking care of us, not how we're taking care of each other. Sometimes he wants us to pause for a moment. We talk about going and doing and doing and going and these little to-do lists and all the things we have to do and all the things that are going on. And sometimes just thinking about it makes me dizzy. God invites us into this place just as he invites all of his sheep to come and to rest, to come and to sit back and let him feed you. Let him take care of you. And he does a wonderful job of that. God provides for us food through the pages of scripture, through the lessons we hear here. God provides for us food for our souls through prayer. We talked about in Bible study, God answering prayers. God provides for us through the Holy Spirit. Now, we talked about that in Bible study as well, that that Holy Spirit is alive and moving among us. And it may not move among us in the way that it moves among other people. We kind of discuss different denominations. You know, some denominations are real somber. Some denominations, you can hear them yelling out in the street. You know, and I say I dare some Sunday mornings. I, you know, we start singing an African-American spiritual, and I really want y'all to put some spirit in it. But in six years, it hadn't happened, and I don't think it's going to happen now. Because what I know of an African-American spiritual and what y'all understand of it, obviously, are two different things. I'm going to pull this mic down for just a second. Because this little light of mine, y'all say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Okay. If you were in a different church, it would be this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. That's a whole lot different, isn't it? And some mornings I just wish the Spirit would have rocked in this place and do that. But 
Again, it hadn't happened in six years. I don't know that it's going to happen now. But some Sunday mornings, I really want to just kick you into gear just a little bit higher. Let that spirit roll through this place. All right. I'm going to stop before some of y'all decide y'all need to commit me. <laughs> but God really does. He works with us. He fills us with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes that Holy Spirit is dying to get out and do things. God fills us with the community. I do. I love this. We talked about this is one of the best places to live. This community, this community takes care of other people. Someone said it was so nice to see all the people that showed up for Brody's benefit. People who show up to support one another. God cares for us. God feeds us with the body and blood of Christ. God gives us all we need to be His children. He loves us. We're His flock. Each one of us are His little children. And this morning, He gathers us here. He says, take a load off. Sit back. Relax. Let me feed you. Let me care for you. Let me refresh and renew you so that you can continue to be the children that I have called you to be. This morning, we're thankful for the flock and we're thankful for the shepherd. Amen. invite you to stand as able as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, for crucified for us. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world, that we may bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God. Gracious Shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness, so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness, may abound with life. Hear us, O God. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations of the people are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overcome others, overpower others, and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those in need. Help us to love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O God. Saving shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community and our life together and give us vigor as people of faith in the midst of challenges and opportunities. Fill us anew with the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands in the assurance of the resurrection hope. We remember our loved ones who have died in you, especially Mark the Evangelist. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. In hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share that peace with those around you. indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
living and loving God. We praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor are yours, Holy Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father hearts in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet for all is now prepared.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those who you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. 
And may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. You may be seated for the announcements. In the way of birthdays this week, uh, we have Braylon Linkeman on the 27th and Aubrey Gunther on the 30th. Now, she was out on the aisle a minute ago. Where'd she go? Aubrey. 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 There you go. We're going to sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Aubrey, happy birthday to you. <laughs> okay, in the way of announcements, um, kind of a busy week this morning. We have Sunday school. I would in, invite all the children downstairs and the parents if you would like to attend. Um, in March, Disney released a movie called Raya and the Last Dragon. I don't know how many of you have seen it. If you've seen it, please don't spoil it for everyone else. Um, it is a really good movie. And what we're going to do is take this movie and break it apart into five segments and discuss it for the next five weeks. It is downstairs. It's ready to play. Um, we're going to have a discussion. We're going to watch a segment. We're going to talk about it a little bit. It brings in some themes about light and darkness, good and evil, trust, betrayal, forgiveness, um, commitment, community, it brings in a lot of really good themes, I think, that we need to hear and be reminded of. So please, if you will, as soon as I dismiss you, go downstairs and we will get the movie started. 
Um, at 12 o'clock, the spy group is going to meet over at Scotty's. Um, if you want to bring some of the younger children, they are welcome to come. The spy group will pay for, I think it's three attractions for those who help with the Easter breakfast. So there's about eight of them that they will pay for um, three attractions for the, um, and then at one o'clock, the, faith, the uh, faith Innovations Guiding Team has a meeting. Um, I will join you guys by Zoom somehow. Uh, on Tuesday, Music and Worship meets. Um, this is an important meeting so we can pick hymns for the next two, three months and make sure that we are going to be able to download them, um, <laughs> which has been a, a fun thing this last time around. Um, music and worship. On Wednesday night, we're doing a Bible study on Lutheran identity. Last week, we had a wonderful discussion about the Holy Spirit. Uh, please join us for this coming Wednesday night as we continue to talk about what makes us uniquely Lutheran and how we see the world through our Lutheran lens. That starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, Saturday night worship at 6, Sunday morning worship at 9, followed by Sunday school. Next Sunday um, is the confirmation students' last class for the school year. They are having their confirmation test. They are so thrilled with me. <laughs> yes, they are. They are just so thrilled, so thrilled with me. The test shouldn't take them but about a half an hour. I hope, I hope, I hope. And at 1.30, we invite the fifth graders and families to join us for some pizza and some discussion about what we're looking at next year. Um, we're still looking for delegates to the Senate Assembly. That deadline is April 30th with this, this week. So um, if you can go, you don't have to be a couple. It's by way of Zoom. If you can make one session and not the other one, we just need voting delegates to the Senate Assembly. Please let me or um, a council member know that today. Uh, there's a mowing schedule in the back. For those of you who are interested in mowing the lawn, I think there are still some premium spots available. Step back there and sign up for yours. Uh, also back there are packets for the summer camp. And they're back there on the table if you want to pick one of those up as well. Are there any other announcements? Oh, Gerald. Yes. I talked to Russ last night. He said she just looked so much better and felt so much better. And he had gotten her to eat, which was a real blessing. So uh, he said thank you for the prayers for Leah. Uh, we continue to pray for her. But uh, that was good news. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Seeing none, go in peace to serve the Lord. <laughs>